Fred Meyer. Ya Achirki ye awa has in kahani kwan kanins. Achsani tlain hiti de gach to kuch. Isani ake? Ah, achsani tlain. Fred, Fred, you do a sock, achsani tlain. Fred Meyer awa. Ya atach to shiko a hitwasa has uti. Hitwasa has uti. Ya wan kanins kosh ke jin gao dat. Clash ach to ash good at nacht day has at nacht has wokoho. You kachonach ach a coward hatelchen. At lane aya at what is a koho at an kadach aya wokoho. Ye awa one canin the dat you took the tun. Ya a a tina chayati was jagood ye de awa hadei. Kha-hwasa-teen-se-hwan-kanin-sa-dati-tach-wa-tang-just-tlaik-tek-hud-sa-ti-gwal-an-kadach-it-hwasa-gu-yak-hu-hu. Sheldon Jackson College, so you do a song. Chak, Kunach Chak. Kashasu Tuashku, Klinkit Yukatanga Kuusi. Ya, you did Kua Klinkit Kai has out to two. Ach two yake. Ya, Kleat Gay Inka Honig, which are good dictionary to share Yaki at Akaya, ye has she were named. Uh, it's great to see everybody. Uh, anything you recognize from what I was just talking about? Or suspects? Or suspicions? I thought you were talking mm -hmm. about a community on the outer coast, but then I couldn't catch the end of it. it something it is called. But yeah. It's called That's the name of where Outer Coast College is now. The village at the head of the bay. Uh, ta uh, is, we're going to learn some different um, landforms. And so it's a whole set of vocabulary. Like qi or qi is a bay, like especially a wide open bay. Ta is the head of a, a bay, specifically. Not the head of a lake, not the head of a river, only the head of a bay. So for example, uh, there's a place called Qa Nakh. And Qa Nakh means pleasant harbor or safe harbor. And uh, there's a group that's from there called Qa Nakh Adi. And the ones, and when they split, there's a group from the head of the bay, which becomes So another thing that we're going to learn this semester is the general rules of Tlingit compounding, when a bunch of words become one word, and then they become a name. Uh, so is village at the head of the bay. Where do you folks think that is? Or does anybody know? Shitka. Uh, it's in Sitka. And uh, anything else I was saying? Anything else? I've heard something about Sheldon Jackson. Yeah, and so that's where Sheldon Jackson College is. And uh, that is a place where Shingit was prohibited. I worked with elders who went there and uh, would talk about how hard it was to have your language prohibited. Uh, Kaseikh Selina Everson, her brother, I never met her brother, 
But her brother was friends with Kashkawu, uh, Cyril George, who we'll listen to this evening. And when they were young, they went there, and the teacher said, you will not speak Clinket on these grounds. And so they would jump in the air when no one was looking and speak Clinket and laugh. Um, but then they would still, they would be really sad. They would still cry about it um, while they were in their 90s about what it was like living through that. But they teach people Tlingit there now. And um, the yellow dictionary, or the orange dictionary that I was talking about, a lot of that work was done at Sheldon Jackson College. Right? Elaine Abraham's work there, uh, Constance Nash and Jillian Story work there. Uh, we'll look at some pictures of Nation's story, and we'll we'll chat about them um, maybe next week. Uh, I also there was a big there was a car accident in front of Achsani uh, Klein. Do we know what that is? Achsani Klein. Big name. Sunny Point. Achsani. Achsani Klein. Big. My. Uncle. Oh, yeah. oh, that, oh, my big paternal uncle. Big paternal. I speak Klingit with my uh, kids. It's full of all kinds of silly humor. Uh, and I, sometimes my kids will say, where are we going? I say, Achsani Klein Hiti. Your, your uncle's house? Your big uncle's house? It's like, ah, Fred, you do a sock. <laughs> Fred Meyer. So I say, it's my uncle, my big uncle, Fred Meyer. Uh, but there was a car accident there. It was a terrible, well, it's a the intersection is okay, but I think four or five o'clock on a weekday, you just you just shouldn't take a left there if you're coming from the university side towards downtown. And then I think about it too, like there is like one road out of town, and if anything bad like really happened, like it'd just be tough to get out of downtown Juneau. Uh, anyway, for starters, uh, I think it's a fun practice because um, we have folks on Zoom and we have folks in the room. And this is fun. You could just do this with folks just in the room. So um, do we know how to count to 10? What's this? Nuts. Okay. Um, so we know how to count to 10 in Tlingit, right? Tlaik, dech, nas, afun, kejin, tleidushu, tachadushu, askadushu, kushuk, jinka. If you raise children in Tlingit, they have a, I don't know if it's just my children, all three of them, dachadushu and naskadushu, they can never remember those two. It's really interesting. I got over and over and over. I'm like, dachadushu ga. Like six? Dachadushu ga. Eight? Like they always pick the wrong numbers too. Like if, and the last one they pick is seven. I don't know. Okay. So here's how the game works. And it, it's really fun. All we're trying to do is count to 10 and cling it without any two people talking at the same time. And you can't give each other signals on whose turn it is to talk. <laughs> so if we go, all we do is make it to 10. But if two people speak at the same time, we have to start over. And we cannot signal in any way who's going to go. Don't raise your hand. Don't nod at someone and point at them like it's their turn. Um, and let's see if we can make it to 10. Can get you a name? Don't. Hey, Jin. Take the shoe. 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 Take the sh
No, but it was said twice. And then that will be the new That doesn't movie. count. <laughs> twice. It's my game. Okay. <laughs> I'll change the rules if I want to. <laughs> yes. You ever like, you know, meet Raven somewhere to go trading? It's like, well, actually, actually, it's a Tuesday, it's a Thursday, so on Thursdays we like to do it this way. Okay. So kinda of, uh, let's try it again. What if we just have one person count? Like <laughs> there's no usurping my system. It will not be a counting mutiny here. Kitchen. Oh, we already did now. Okay, so can I help? <laughs> this is gonna be this is the whole class actually the entire click ask <laughs> <laughs> that was not two, that was three. That is not against the rules. Definitely at least three. Unity. That's actually collaboration. Three people did it, so it's not two. Oh, yeah. Okay. If six people do it at the same time, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> Nask. Cajun. Kadushu. Dakadushu. Nask Nask Kadushu. It's always the eight. It's kind of <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this will allow it. Judges will allow. It. And it was two barks too dead. <laughs> the universe is aligned today. Okay, I'll accept it. No, it's good. We're okay, Jim. We're okay, Jim. But yes, okay. What? Who said Dachun? I couldn't hear it. Okay, that that was great. That was great. Shut up. To Canal. Play. Play. <laughs> Ask. Nakun. We say Tahayagu. Our ship has sunk. So can I ask? Ask. Dachun, Kijin, Kadishu, Dachadishu, Nakadishu, 
That's the one. Kushuk. Zinkat. Well, we made it to hey. two. Today, it's white. <laughs> white. Okay, one more time. Okay. Nice. Do you Do we want to keep going until we get it? Think we can get it? Okay. We'll keep going until we get it. is killer. Mask. Ask. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> you just said we had to get to 10. You didn't say we had to go through all the numbers to get there. <laughs> uh, yes, creative. We're getting creative now. Points for creativity. Good job. Thanks. Zuka got to off. I'll start over. Okay. Yaha Kanda Kane. We're really falling apart now. So, Kune, at the risk of my classmates killing me, um, we should go backwards, count down. Oh. <laughs> click, click. Jinka. <laughs> shook. Oh, man. Took a gun. Oscar Wait, no, we got to start. Huh? We got to start at Jinka. 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 Ah. Shook. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll say Dalkoon? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Time out. Time out. <laughs> you going up or down? <laughs> yes. Both at the same both? time. Oh, both? <laughs> just, okay. start, just start throwing out random numbers. <laughs> that's, that's in. Yo, we thought we were really good at counting and playing it. This early 2000s, probably 2003. And then we played cribbage and king it. And then we realized all we knew how to do was say a bunch of words in a row. We weren't really counting. We we're just going up to 10. And so we had to go, like when we had to start adding stuff, we had to slow things way down. Okay. Okay. That was fun. That was fun. Should we call it? Should we keep going? Okay. Cool. Okay. But you get the, uh, like, the idea here is just to like do something fun. Uh, also, it, it allows us to think about turn taking and, and like you know, stuff like that. And it's fine. Like I, I want us to have an open environment when we're asking to translate things. Do you know these things? Um, I think what we'll do. OK, there's a couple of process things to talk about here. Uh, we have a plan for how we're going to study Klingit. Uh, this first week, it's like a warm up. It's a warm up. So we're going to look at little readings in Klingit. We'll probably talk about verbs for a little bit. We'll see if you folks have questions from your summer of language study or however long it's been since you've taken a Klingit language class. Uh, and we just want to always have time. At the start of classes, I generally like to speak Klingit to you folks, see what you um, are understanding. But usually when I speak Klingit, I will say, does anyone else want to speak? And, and at that point, I'm hoping we're still in Klingit. If you want to respond to anything that I've said, if you want to say something of your own, 
It doesn't have to fall. It, it can go and it can kind of bounce all over the place like our counting was at the end, right? One, two, nine, seven, four, right? Uh, and it's fine. Like, but the idea is just to practice being conversational in Tlingit, which just to be honest is one of the most difficult things to just talk and think it about your day, your wants, your needs. So usually the day will start with, the class will start with, I'll speak think it, I'll see if anybody else wants to say anything. If you're responding to what I say, I might respond to what you say. If you want to bring up a new topic, you can. Sometimes we're going to try some strategies on how to go find a topic and come back in here uh, and talk about it. And then We'll just sort of, I'll just say, you know, are there any questions, any language stuff you've been thinking about? And that's a good time. So, if, and if you ever ask me questions in between classes, you can. I might answer it. Uh, if it seems like it's something you want to answer right away for, then I'll answer it. But otherwise, I'll probably just bring it into class so that we can all talk about it. Because maybe someone else has the same question or will at some point. Uh, so if you're looking at some sort of phrase or something that people are talking about, and you're like, well, why does this thing pop up? What is this thing? We can talk about that stuff. Then we'll move into sort of, I, I generally tend to try and have one thing that's like a lesson, like we're studying uh, adjectives. And then we'll also have some sort of story or some sort of sentence translation work that we're doing. And so that's kind of my strategy. And then when we go through, uh, we'll review the thing at workbook. And the Thlingit workbook is really designed by uh, Nora Marks Downhower and Richard Downhower. The Thlingit names were Kehne and Huayinak. Uh, the strategy there is to introduce sounds and then to start teaching some basic concepts while gradually introducing the sound. So if you look at the earlier chapters, you don't see a lot of words that are really difficult for English speakers, right? You don't have a lot of the big, the big sneaky sounds aren't in there yet. They come in the later chapters. And then it's really teaching these drills that you can do. What's this? What's that? Where's this? Where's that? And then it starts to introduce like a, a verb. It's verbless for the first probably three chapters. And then it starts getting into like, here's a couple of verbs. Here's some phrases. And then the whole thing basically starts to get more complicated in terms of the sounds that you're using, the vocabulary that's there, start using these more complicated sounds. And then a lot of it is fill in the blank type of phrases. I want this, I want that, you want this, you want that, what do you have, I have this, right? So it's a lot of question and answer stuff with fill in the blanks. Sometimes they have multiple blanks, right? But that's kind of the the underlying structure, you get into the later chapters, it does start to change the objects and verbs, change the subjects and verbs, and then show you a whole bunch of different verbs. <coughs> and then it kind of it more or less wraps up after that. And the weather it does a little bit for like perfective, imperfective, progressive, imperfective future, which is really this third language we use to talk about how Shingit works, because it works different than English. English changes the language based on time, Tlingit changes the language based on event. So time is not the driving uh, factor for why you would change a verb. Uh, when we get into intermediate Tlingit, we're going to review all that stuff. Then we're going to start looking at everything that's not a verb. So we'll look at uh, how to modify a noun. We'll look at adjectives. We'll look at a bunch of direction and relational terms, right? So on, under, around, through, those types of things. Then we start getting into a little bit more complicated uh, phrases at times, making sure we know some interjections like hadla or hado if you're in the interior, uh, things like that. Then we begin to look at verbs and we start to learn how to spot them, talk about the parts that are there, and we really start to take those things apart and learn how to put them together with the idea of trying to focus on common verbs that we see. So that's kind of our roadmap for the semesters. So that's kind of the path that we're going to take. I'm always open for questions, uh, but I, I'm also always open for feedback. So if you think it's going 
uh, too slow for you, you can reach out, let me know. If you think it's going too fast for you, you can reach out, let me know. If you feel like there's stuff you don't understand, don't feel like you have to be quiet and watch us just drive on by. Like, let's all try to stay together. And so there's a lot of parts to think it. Uh, and then we're also going to be doing stuff to make sure that the Tlingit that we're speaking sounds more and more like the Tlingit that we want to listen to. Uh, there is uh, a language teacher I know from Guam, his Chamorro, and he once told me, I speak, like my, I speak my grandmother's language, but I don't speak like my grandmother. So we might not all sound like the classic Tlingit peoples who gave great big speeches and could tell great big stories, but some of us will. And then all of us will be working on, there's a lot of accent adjustment that we tend to do because English conveys a lot of stuff through tone, right? You convey sarcasm, frustration, questioning, uncertainty, politeness, a lot of that stuff is done through the tone, right? So um, you might raise things up at the end and then you just might have a natural tendency to do that. But you can't really do that in Tlingit. Like it has to, Tlingit has its own tone structure. So sometimes we'll be working on that, vowel length, certain consonants, and stuff like that. So that's generally what we're going to do. Uh, Tuesday, however, um, we have been invited as a class <clears throat> to witness and to take part in a cultural exchange between some folks from Hawaii and some folks that live here. So for those of you who are in the Akkwan Juno area, it's going to be at the Juno Arts and Humanities Center, uh, also known as the Jack, which is downtown. Uh, it does start, let me double check, it starts the same time, I think, oops, I wasn't putting this up, as our class. Um, let me make sure. Yes, yeah, so it starts at 5.30. And so that will be our class. You could stay uh, until 7.30. And it's, it's optional. I'm not going to make anybody do anything. Uh, but those of you on the Zoom, I'll be bringing the gear. So you'll be able to see it, hear it, witness it. Um, it's not all going to be in Tlingit. There will be some Tlingit that's spoken There'll be some cultural exchanges that are made. Uh, but that's going to be Tuesday's class. Uh, we we're all invited. So you'll see there's a lot of cultural exchanges that goes on between Tlinga peoples and Hawaiian. Uh, it goes way back. Um, and it's, it's important stuff because we get a lot of language ideas and things from them. Uh, so, but it does impact what we study. So because of that, I'm going to give you folks an assignment. So your assignment is to memorize as many bird names as you can. So when we come back, we won't be in this classroom on Tuesday, but when we're in this classroom on Thursday, you guys are on the Zoom, we're all together, it's just us. We are going to start by making sure everybody's name is on that list that we just made a little while ago. So we have a Google Sheet with everybody's name on it. That is just simply the order that we're going to go in. So you can imagine if we're all sitting in a circle, that would be the order going left to going towards the left of who's in the, which seat. The way it's going to work is we are all going to name a single bird, then it goes to the left, and you cannot name a bird that's already been named. And we will see, especially if there's 20 of us, if we go around three times, that's 60 birds. So we'll see how many birds we can name. Any questions, thoughts, anything on your mind regarding any of this stuff? Um, does, like, uh, the, 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 does like the Orange Dictionary contain like uh, words for birds that the uh, other online Tlingit dictionaries don't? Or like, no. Okay. The one that might have, um, okay, so I don't think I have a, an electronic copy of the orange, well maybe, let me take a look.
No, I don't. I should get a copy of it, though. Okay. Check your email. Oh, Gunchish. I sent I I you one. Gunchish. Okay, so now I do. I'll put it in my... I'll put it in my folder. Um, so while we're on the topic... Uh, Let's talk about resources for this class. Uh, I'm going to share my screen with you folks. I should put it up here. Okay. And I should also share it. So this class, uh, and the way I teach Tlingit, and the way I work in Tlingit, uh, really has to do with an interface of uh, three different things. One of them things is this blog, uh, clinkitlanguage.com. I try to put everything I can and link to everything I could think of uh, from here. And so if you go to learning Clinkit and intermediate Clinkit, I should change them all to Clinkit. I'll do that someday. Uh, this is our class webpage. So if you have looked at this class webpage before, it was an awful lot longer than it is now. But now it ends with uh, just the other day. Oops, I got to get this one out of there. Okay. Uh, and you could find the older stuff here, but it was getting so long that it was really taking a long time to make any edits to the page. So I went ahead today and just archived. So if you're looking for any content that we went over, you could watch these intermediate Clinkit classes, I think, back to. 2014 or something like that, 15 maybe. Um, you don't have to, but if you want to, you could. But anyway, so usually in the evening, if I have enough energy to do it, I upload our classes. So every class that we go through here is recorded, put onto YouTube. So I have a YouTube channel, there's clinkitlanguage.com, and then there's a Google Drive. Those three things are all linked together to help you um, find any resources that you're looking for. Uh, there are some resources that some people don't always want me to share, uh, but in those cases, it's not because they're sensitive or it's not because, well, there's no good reason for it. Uh, I don't believe people should be restricting access to language materials. Uh, I think that's a really bad move when you have an endangered language. I believe in access to everything uh, and not everybody agrees, um, but we're also we're not here to argue about that. So the idea here is just creating access. So on here there is the syllabus for our class. Uh, usually you'll see the date here uh, with the there's different variations for the Tlingit months. So I'll just I just use the ones that I have learned, uh, and then you'll have the topics that we went over that day. Any sort of handout, so if we go over any sort of slideshow or something, you'll have a link to it right here. And then here's the chat. So you can also look at, uh, usually I'll, be, I'll take notes as we go through a class, like so these are the notes I took on Tuesday. Uh, and then the chat. However, if someone sends me a direct message on the chat, I will delete that from the chat before I upload it here. Okay, just in case, because you always have if you, always want, if you want to ask me something and you don't want to ask it in front of everybody, that's certainly one way that you could do it. If you go up towards the top of our page, um, it shows you the YouTube channel. Uh, these are the things that we're going to be using. So we use the beginning Clinkit workbook, the current draft of the Clinkit dictionary, the Clinkit verb dictionary by Storia Nash, Clinkit uh, Enachsa. Uh, there is a verb database, which is wonderful, and you should, the download, as far as I know, only works on computers, not really on mobile devices, uh, but if you download it, you don't need the internet to access it, which is wonderful. Hausane uh, Chayuchatangi, Clinkit Reference Guide. Uh, I do recommend having these two, Kashuka, Hatu Nagulis. Uh, there's advanced things on here. There's a Clinkit stem list. We'll take a look at that. Clinkit verb notes. We'll take a look at that as well. And then uh, the verbal structure handbook. Awesome. 
What section of the website is this for? This is on learning Clinkit and intermediate Clinkit. Then it should, should be right on the top. So these, these will stay up here. Now I'll give you the translation guide to some of the other things that are in here. This is access to hundreds of recordings that Nora and Richard Dauenhauer made and acquired over the course of their career that were digitized by Jock Alice Taff. Uh, oh wait, no, that's this one. What is this one? Oh, this is uh, Clinkit Audio. So when you click on here, you get to Clinkit Audio. Uh, this, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. So some of it is under the names of people who shared that with me. Uh, some of that is under the names of the speakers. All the audio for Klingit Enach Ach is in there. Uh, the audio for the Raven book is in here. Um, you have enough Klingit audio in here to last you a lifetime. Like you have access to all kinds of stuff. So this, this one is Klingit audio. This one here is the Downhower collection. <laughs> Hundreds of tapes. Uh, and then there's also a finding guide to this, which I think you click on it, the finding guide is right there. So if you look at the finding guide, you could download this, you can search it. So if you entered in here a name of a speaker, it'll come up if those tapes have that, that speaker. If you enter a clan name, you know, or you can enter Yakutat or whatever. And so just note there are item numbers like, so if we go down, here's item number 10, and that is also tape 10, but it doesn't always line up that way. So you might go further down and have item 28, but that is tape number 25. So if you wanted to find tape 25, because you look in, you're like, oh, Mr. Charlie White was Lukach Addi from Yakutat, and Susie James possibly the fastest Klingit speaker who ever lived. And if you want to listen to it, then you would close this, or you go back, and you go up to this folder, tapes 1 through 30, and then you would go down to tape 5, or tape 25, side A, side B. Most of these are entirely in Klingit. Uh, you can also find uh, a lot of stuff that's already been trans transcribed and translated as well. This is all of the recordings and notes collected by Frederica de Laguna. Uh, so did, they did a lot of work in Yakutat and Angoon. Uh, this is Clinkit videos. And then um, I think I'll add one more thing on here too, uh, which you could find by going to just clicking on curriculum and then there is this curriculum folder. So this folder has everything that I've ever collected in Tlingit, uh, handouts, texts. If there's something that's been published about the Tlingit language, it's probably in here. Uh, there's also all kinds of, there's a lot of things, which is why the interface of ClinkitLanguage.com is, is made, so that you don't have to dig through all of these folders. But there's, there is a lot of stuff in here, and if I collect more stuff, I put it in here. Uh, I'll give you the inside scoop, but also say, well, if you teach Tlingit, you can go look at slideshows. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Everything I've used to teach Tlingit is mostly in there, to like teach it with visuals. And then I think another thing to know is under Shkashnik, um, there are stories in here, and if you go to like Hashuka, which is a publication, you will also find audio from that. So you can read uh, Tacha, the mosquito story, and then you can listen to it, and you can, you know, there's lots of good practice that could be done that way. Because then you can listen to it, pause it, repeat, and you can read it and you can see the translation. So this does a lot of work for you. Because if you're ever wondering like, what do I do next? What do I do next? Build lists of things, nouns, verbs, adjectives, figure out what those things are. And as you're learning how to put those together and change them, 
spend a lot of time listening to stuff. And sometimes listen to stuff that you don't know what it is. There's benefits in it. But if that feels intimidating, listen to things where you can read the translation right there. Because then once you've read the translation, keep listening to it. Because you, your English brain already knows it, and then your Tlingit brain starts to be assisted by that knowledge. Okay, any questions about any of that? I have a question. <clears throat> Where was that with the audio of Hashuka? Yeah, yeah, so let's walk through that again. So on clinkitlanguage.com, if you click on curriculum, and I will put a link on our class page for the curriculum folder, uh, there is this link right here that says Clinkit Curriculum. It's a Google folder. Under here, if you go down to Shkashnik, which is story or stories, and then you could go down to Hashuka, and here's Hatu Nagu Yis. Uh, there's also, there was a publication that came out that's included in Hatu Nagu Yis. It's called Because We Cherish You, and that one is here as well. So then you have the audio for them, uh, and then under Shkashnik, if you go to, again, Hashuka. Uh, and usually, if you go through, like, so here's Glacier Bay, here's Duktut. So Duktut is a strongman story. So you could download this audio and put it on your device. And then you can also download a PDF of the story. And then you can read and you can listen to it at the same time. This says that I need access to it. Oh, really? You shouldn't. Okay. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. It says that I need access. Okay. Let me. Let me try something. Chief, thanks for letting me know. Yeah, it looks like everybody has to request access. Okay, well, let's try it. <clears throat> One second. Okay, so now uh, let's try accessing, accessing this from a different spot. So let's see if this helps. So try going to uh, clinkitlanguage.com, learning Clinkit, then intermediate Clinkit, and then try the curriculum folder link right there. You might have to update your own browser, like hit refresh on your browser, perhaps. And I can see it. Okay. Good. Good as cheese. Let me fix that other. Wonder if there's anything else that is like that. No, it still says that I need access. Oh, really? Yeah. Mine is fine. Are, are you logged in with your Google account? Um, yeah, I am. Okay, well, let me fix. Uh, I think it's the link on that curriculum folder. And so you might have to um, close it and then reopen it, perhaps. Sorry. Oh, wow. Yeah, it works for me. So, are we supposed to see uh, Stranik under curriculum? Uh, in that curriculum folder, yes. Okay, it just loaded. It just did it. Yay. Yeah, sometimes everything has to catch up. So, let's check here for Scott. So, under Clink It curriculum, this is alphabetical. There are lots of things here. Um, this one that says language images and illustrations, you should be able to find every single image that's used in the beginning Clinkit workbook. Every single image that's in Hausanei Chayu Chatungi, 
uh, you can use them to, if you're teaching and doing stuff like that, feel free to use them. And if you go down to uh, Shkashnik, that's, it's under Klinket Curriculum, Shkashnik, and that's where you'll find these stories, yes. Under Hashuka. And one thing I'll talk about next week is uh, Sea Alaska Heritage Institute is sponsoring a retype of Hashuka, Hatu Nagoyis, and Anushi Shinkatani Ka. And what we're going to do is just line the stories up a little bit more to how the audio is, perhaps adjust some of the translations. We're not trying to change the work of uh, Nora and Richard Dauenhauer. Uh, but we're trying to translate it more for the language learning community. So one of the intentions of Hashika, especially, it was to elevate Klinket literature. And it did, it did a wonderful job of that. But because that was one of the goals, the translation targets an English speaker. So you'll see that with word order and stuff. Like, so when there might be some adjustments we make to word order, to just sort of say, for a learner, it's easier to see how this becomes that, right? Uh, but it's really exciting to have that and then to have some different options that we can do. So one of the things that we'll be doing this semester too is taking a really close, detailed look at Tagha. And so uh, basically we'll listen to Robert Zuboff say a sentence twice, then we'll have one of, one of us will take turns saying it, then we'll go through and then we'll look at the a breakdown of how the whole language is working, which includes a translation for us. Okay, other thoughts or questions? Where were the tapes? They are under, uh, if you go to, Intermediate Clinket, and you go down, it's Kehne Kahoyginak. Which means the box of things that Nora and Richard wrote at the mouths of people. So some things on this website are written in Tlingit because they're actually, they're not always for everybody. They're for the language learning community. Um, but some folks might be looking for specific things and um, it's a bit more of an internal conversation with those who are actively learning. Uh, I think these are great. People should have access to them. Um, yeah. But then also some things are on here because some people get mad because I'll put stuff up on the internet that has... It might be copyright, but I don't think you can copyright stuff in our language, so I don't know. Okay. Cheese. So I thought it would be good um, uh, to do little readings in Tlingit. Um, we started a little bit late, so I think we're going to power through, power through today. We usually have our break, but... Um, so this is written by Vesta Dominix, who taught Tlingit out of Sitka, uh, illustrated by J. Leslie Baffa, and I made a few text updates just in terms of like how things are spelled. This is a project uh, that was developed in 1981. There was a lot of bilingual materials that were developed out of this office in Anchorage um, with Tupao Pulu as the educational director. Uh, and we've got a bunch of these wonderful little books. And so I was taking these books and giving them an update so that we can have these uh, to learn from, because there's wonderful phrases in them. Uh, so the way that this is going to work is everyone's going to, we're going to take turns, and if it's your turn and you want to read, then you will read both of the sentences. Uh, and after you have read the sentences, I will ask you, the reader, if you know or recognize any parts that you have read. And even if it's just a word, right? So, okay, I think I know what that word is. Then once we've given you a chance, so those of you who weren't reading, 
just pause. I know some of us might know the answer and are very excited to count on top of somebody else's number, but just wait a second, because then once we have allowed the reader a chance to read it and attempt to interpret it, then we'll open it up to everybody. And we'll just say, does anybody recognize anything or does anybody know what this is saying? Uh, the illustration does usually help a little bit. Uh, and so this is what we're going to do uh, for a little bit. So does anybody want to read these two sentences? Luke? Uh, so what? A shoe. A shoe. He away in Unzikit. Sheesh. Das away a shoe. To kick away hint would to get. And do you recognize anything in them? Das away. Do away. Hint? Yes. And so how would you translate those things that you recognize? What is that? That or they? There. There. The possessive there. Wait, do you think keek? Uh, that's a. Uh, uh, what's it called? Like. Like sibling or. Yes. Do we know what kind of sibling? It's the same. The same gender as the one talking. Yep. Okay. And. And that is water. And water. Yes. Yeah. So this would be a sibling of the same gender who is younger than the speaker. Oh, a little sibling. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else recognize anything else in here? A shuk is like to laugh. A shuk is to laugh. And it's to laugh at something. That means there's only one thing one thing left. Verb. Then there is there are two verbs, there's one in each sentence. So okay, let, let's finish. Oh. Let's finish. So if we've got all the parts. <laughs> what is that they're laughing at it or them? Uh, their, their little sibling wet their pants, is it? Not quite. Oh. Not quite. But how would we translate this first sentence? What, is it? what are they laughing at? What are they laughing at? <clears throat> what are they laughing at? And then their little sibling. That. All that's left to. And fell so, in the water. What's that? Fell in the water. Fell in the water. Oh, yes. I didn't recognize the, fell. No. What does the T I T that, That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Let me, uh, okay. Let me pull up the verb dictionary. We're going to go back and forth between this and the verb dictionary. And then let me open the chat so I can keep an eye on it. Um, ah, okay. It is difficult to hear folks in the room. Can you tap that and see if those are on? I think yours might be off. I think mine's off. Yeah. We're having yeah, okay, hold on, folks. We're having a little bit of difficulty with these. Um, I don't think this one has charged. This one has a light on it though. Oh, that has a light? Okay. Okay, there we go. The one with the light on seems to be working. Okay. Oh. That one work? It's quiet, but I can hear it. Yeah. It's all coming over here now. Yeah, I think that's the only one. It's over. <clears throat> yeah, that one's definitely better. Mostly okay. It's like you're talking into a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. Last time I do a song, throw your voice, clean it. Tina. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gaudin. 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 Gaudin is an adverb. It means loudly. 
Shagao Dane. Shagao Dane. Shagao Dane. Okay. Uh, yes. So as far so when we go a little bit back and forth with these, so here we have Dasawe Ashuk, right? So here's uh, and just things to know: long, low, short, high, short, high, short, low, long, low, right? So we have ah, uh, ah, uh, eh, ah, uh, ooh. Just keep that in mind. What those vowels are like: is it long? Is that short? Is it low? Is that high? Right? So then you have dasawe ashuk. And then if we're going to look up that verb, ashuk, what will we look up? Shuk. Shuk. Yes, we're going to go look up shuk. So this brings us into uh, everybody's favorite dictionary. And so the Tlingit Verb Dictionary, which was uh, published in 1973, has a gold cover, uh, is a wonderful dictionary. There are a couple things that are different now in terms of how Tlingit is written, and mostly they have a downward tone. We don't use that. They use a downward tone to mark long and low. The other thing that they do is they tend to put two, they'll put something long, where nowadays it, we would write it short. And so I don't know if they could always hear the difference between all the long and short vowels, but it's not a big deal. And then it has, uh, you should read the, like all the text around this dictionary. It's really neat. We talk about the grammar quite a bit differently now than we did in 1973, but these folks were amazing. They were wonderful. They could speak Tlingit. They did wonderful work in Tlingit. Uh, I was able to chat with them on the phone in a class with Nora and Richard Dauenhauer, and they were so nice. They were such uh, awesome people. So the first section is uh, English to Tlingit. And as we look stuff up, sometimes we might look something up and it tells us to go look somewhere else for that concept. So here you might have abstain, and then you look up and you see Tlingit, right? So here you say Tlingit, I am abstaining from it. Uh, and that could be meat or it could be uh, I'm not eating things off the beach right now. It could be something, right? Or uh, some people have religious observations where you stop eating particular things for a set amount of time. Uh, and if we went, so what this gives us is it gives us uh, a bit of a description of what this means, and it gives us sample sentences. So for example, we would write both of those, wu and do, short. You write them short because those are short. You say wu du and you can hear them. It's not wu du The other thing is we can go look up. Uh, can... Oh, was there a question? So then, every time you look up a word in the verb dictionary, if you look it up in English, you should go look up the. You should go look it up in Tlingit as well. If you look it up in Tlingit, you should go look it up in English so that you're reading all the sample sentences associated with that particular verb. So, for example, if I wanted to go look this up to say, well, how does it work? What I want to go look up the verb root. The verb root here is qas. So I'm going to go down here. When we go to the Tlingit to English section, and this text on the left might be really small for you folks. Um, the way they alphabetize is generally from the front of the lips to the back of the throat. So that's their method of alphabetizing. We don't use that anymore, but when you go in here, you just got to kind of remember that. Like it, you get A, although it does it for the vowels. I don't know what their consonant system is actually, because H is in the back of the throat. Uh, but we're going to go look up the underline G. And if we go to the underline G, we will see the vowel order. It does the I vowels, 
or the, well, I guess we'll say the evals. Then you go down, then you're going to get the A vowels, which turns into EI. Then you're going to get the U vowels, which turns into OO. And then you're going to get the A vowels. How do you get the menu on the rest of the letters? It depends on what type of viewer you're using. If you're using Adobe Acrobat, um, but here you would view table of contents. So it depends on what you're using to view your PDF. But it is super helpful to be able to see that table of contents. Well, you can Firefox to do it. Oh, yeah? OK. Let's see. Oh, I think I found it. OK. Oh, great. OK, so then we go to, so here we see khiqaz, abstain. But then there's a related verb, which means for something to be forbidden, for something it's not allowed. It's shakas to laugh at animals. It's shakas to, um, well, it's shakas to watch a whale tail go down. That's what I've heard. Right, so there's, and there's different levels of what this thing might mean when you say khiqas, khiqas, ayah, ishi, ishi. And it could mean this is just something we don't do because it's considered rude, but it could also mean this is something we don't do because you're like, if you go to Teslin, you don't throw rocks into the lake because if you throw rocks into the lake, you're going to get bad weather. Um, okay. So the verb that we were looking for, though, is shuk. So when we go look up shuk, so here's sh, and we start with she, then we go to shu, and then we find shuk. So this is the verb that we were looking at. So it says ya shu. So we write our verbs a little bit differently these days than they did back then. So uh, I will show you what they look like now, uh, but I want to just point out a couple of things. So what you're seeing here is the verb root. The verb root shuk has meaning. It means to laugh or smile. So then you could see, uh, nowadays we would write this as a zero classifier. It means to laugh at something. You can also have at shuk, which just means to laugh in general. So if he's dasa at shuk doesn't make sense, it would sound like what is it that's laughing? Because I don't know, I don't know why we would ask that. Because it's usually people who laugh, right? That'd be very creepy. It would, right? What is laughing, right? So, but if you say dasa a shuk, what are they laughing at? Now it makes sense. At shuk laughing. A shuk, laughing at something, okay? We'll talk about all these different things, how we get those differences. Then we see there's one with an L classifier, which means to make laugh. It also means to be funny. Uh, then you have to laugh at mockingly, you have to smile at, and you have to keep laughing. So when you look at this, whatever you see with an underline, that says you could go look that up, and you'll find sample sentences. So then if we looked up shuk here, we should go up and look up laugh. So we go down, oops, we go up. Can't spell, L-A-U. Uh, and then we get it right here, kunah achuk. They really laughed. When this dictionary is fully retyped, there will be some, uh, there's some spelling adjustments to be made, and there's some meaning adjustments to be made. Like that doesn't mean he, that just means they. So we would use a singular they because there's no gender in that sentence. Like that's a genderless phrase. Uh, uh, don't laugh at all. I don't laugh at all now. Um, I no longer laugh. That's a very dramatic sentence. Um, okay, so that gets us to that. So the second one that we saw, 
Like, so these are, they're so neat. Like just these two little sentences. We spent a lot of time just looking at them to see how they work. Dasa we ashuk. What are they laughing at? Do kik away hint with the git. So there is a T on heen. We are going to learn what it is um, later, but I'll tell you now. There are these directional suffixes. And the, this suffix means it is there and it has probably recently arrived or is touching it. So that's a hint to the water. It already happened. Because you could say, Hinde Wutzakit, they fell towards the water. Are they still falling now? Is it like a long way down? Hint Wutzakit. So Tlingit does a lot of stuff with, with, like this is a motion verb. Motion verbs are the most complicated verbs. They just love to be complicated. But one of the things that they do is they usually attach to what type of motion is it? Did it already get there? Yep. They in the water, right? So then that leaves us with this. What are we going to look up for what to get? Geet. Geet. So these verbs have verb roots. The verb root contains the meaning. Geet, shuk. When we say stem, stem is not the same thing as saying a root. I'd get them, I'll probably get them mixed up sometimes. What do you think the stem is then? Any, anybody know? Any guesses? The particular way that the root appears in a particular verb? That is correct. And it all has to do with the vowel. Okay. Is it going to be short and high? Is it going to be long and high? Or is it going to be long and low? Those are usually your three options. Is it can be short and high? It can be long and high? Or it could be long and low? And what you are going to learn is it changes predictably predictably okay so this one is short and high git we will look it up as git so when we go back to the verb dictionary we go down to the g's eat there it is so we see this one that's an S classifier, which we're not looking for. We know it has DZI, which we would call a D plus S classifier. This will all make sense. This is the one we're looking for. For a live creature to fall. And Klinget loves categories. Klinget, I was always like, can I get categories for a million it loves categories, living things, solid things, things that can spill, things, you know, there's a logic to all of this stuff that Tlingit loves to have within its language, okay? So what you'll see is like the general, so there's a general meaning to this verb, which means to fall, for a living thing to fall. So that means you wouldn't really use this for like my cup fell down because your cup's not alive. Dog fell down? Sure. You fell down? Sure. Kid fell down? Yep. Moose fell down? Yes. Tree fell down? No. Okay. But then what you're going to get afterwards is the way that Tlingit makes verbs. Okay? Because Tlingit makes verbs. The language makes verbs. Is it can change the classifier. If you change the classifier group, you have a new verb. You can also add things in front of the verb, like this put. That means to get, to be lost. To be elected, right? So sometimes you get different meanings that are based. It still means like for something to fall, 
But in Tlingit, there's just a logic there. So we'll go look up fall and see what kind of examples we have under it. So every time we look up a verb, if we look it up in Clinkit, we'll go look it up in English, just so we can read it and just learn more, be inquisitive, think about it. Is it fall? We'll go look up fall. That's right. So then we see a bunch, right? Number of objects together to let something fall, for things to fall in a mass, making a pile, uh, for a live creature to fall, there it is, for a hard solid object to fall, for fabrics to fall, for a powdery or grain-like substance to fall, uh, for stick-like objects to fall, for small compact objects to fall, for large or complex objects to fall, for round objects to fall, for small stick-like objects to fall, for precipitation to fall, uh, for water to cascade, for something to fall apart in two pieces, for something to fall apart and come apart, for buildings to fall down, and then we get to fall out. So, so there's a lot there. We're going to just stick with the one we were looking for. Zait kach wudzigit. How is this verb different than the one we just heard? Uh, the E is long and high. It's long and low. They, they, oh, yeah. This has a downward tone marker, just ignore it. We, 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 we will delete it, it when we retype it's everything. Downward tone marker? It is. Yeah. We don't need it. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, it just tells you it's long and low, but we know that because there's just two vowels in the marker now. It looks very similar. This yeah. is how they did it in 1973. Mm -hmm. So, just take and just note it, right? Kesh a day ti kach has kuch zagiti yet. There's no way they all will fall on the ice. I don't know why. They must be very. I guess that statement is like, there's no way. There's no way they're gonna fall. They must really know how to walk on the ice or something. Uh, okay. Could be. So, so what about the second geet? There, there were two geets in the dictionary. Oh, oh, yeah. Sheesh. So let's go back. Uh, so here, well, you have... Okay, so coming back, you have a verb root, geet. Uh, in this case, um, you could change, you can create new verbs by changing the classifier. S classifier is different than D plus S classifier. But then the other thing that you'll get when you look this up is this little number one and this little number two. And what do those mean? Different, uh, different meanings. Yeah, different meanings, different types. Tlingit has homonyms, every language does, right? Like when I say the English word bow, what am I saying? They're saying like. Depends on context. Yeah. You gotta you guess. I want to give you a person's name, an arrow. Yes, my cousin Bo. That's exactly what I was thinking. Someone yeah. else. But it could be a bow and arrow. It could be a bow that you tie on a like a ribbon. Uh, yeah, like a bow of a boat, maybe. That's bow. Oh, yeah. But if you have a bow of a boat, you have a bow of a tree. Yeah. You could, what about a violin bow? Yes, that's that bow. You take a bow. You take a bow with a bow. Is bow as in the one bow it's still spelled differently? Same B O W, right? The bow, the bow of the bow of the bow? Well, sometimes bow as like a last name or a first name is spelled like the French way. You know? B-E-A-U? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the second geet here is to do or to behave. Right? So this is the one uh, when people translate prayers, they'll say 
we'll do as you say. And they'll use this, this zagid, this one. This is also uh, for if you are translating the Judas Priest song, breaking the law, so this would be it right here. A gate with the git. They, they violated. But it could also be breaking the law, but it could also be a gate with the git. That would be they really did something wrong. That could also include a cultural violation of protocol, which if you said a gate with the git, they, there's different ways to say this stuff. How could you say they messed up. A gate would say, get, they messed up and there's going to be some consequences. And then you could also say, um, what they did was violating natural law of the world. Okay, see so your hand up. What's the way? Yeah, I noticed the, in the parentheses after these, that's TR, the other is IN. Is that transcendent and intransident? Yes. Is that typical when you have these two homonyms, or is that just happens to be how these are set up? That's a great question. So when we talk about the transitivity of a verb, all that that means is, is there an object? Is there a subject? Is there both is, or, or none? Right? And they will tell you this. So when you see, all you have to remember is this. And we, we write it different nowadays, so you don't have to remember this part. But if you look something up in this dictionary, if you see TR in parentheses, there is an object and there is a subject. You cannot remove them. They are built into the verb. They will not go away. So now we would write this K plus O, capital O, dash, capital S, dash, lowercase s for the classifier, dash, root marker, geet, little number two. So that's how we're writing them these days. Also color coding them. Uh, we will, I'll show you what it looks like um, in a second. So what do you think this one is? Well, let's not guess, okay. Close. So we would call this object in transitive which means there is only an object pronoun, no subject pronoun. Cannot add it, you cannot take the object away. The object is the one that the verb happens to, the subject is the one who does the verb, right? So now we see, oh, what about I-N? Intransitive. Intransitive, which we would nowadays call subject intransitive, only a subject, not an object. Cannot add it. There's one more. Let's see if I can find the last one. There it is. Impersonal. No object, no subject. Can't add them in. Four. Transitive, both object and subject. Object and transitive, only an object, which in this case they call it stative, so ST. Intransitive, they have it IN, only a subject. I am impersonal, neither. You see, you have a cup. Okay. TR, in parentheses, transitive. Okay. You will have both an object and a subject, and you cannot take them out. Okay. I N in parentheses, you only have a subject, you cannot add the object, and you cannot remove the subject. You cannot add a subject, you only have subject only. Only the subject. Yeah. Okay. ST only an object. I am neither. What was the second one called after transitive? Transitive stative, intransitive, impersonal. But we don't really use those terms anymore. But I think it's good to know is that when you look it up in this dictionary, so we've, we have attempted to make it easier these days. 
And if you haven't talked about this stuff before, objects, subjects, transitive, it's okay. It's okay. All we're trying to do here is show you how to read the theme so that you know what kind of things need to go in there. So here's the, the new dictionary. Uh, it is alphabetized all, it just uses an adapted English alphabetizing system. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? So this is divided into not verbs, verbs, English. That's the structure of this dictionary. So the second section is verbs. So we'll go down to root marker and G. And we'll scroll down to Geet. So here is our verb that we just saw, okay? So as far as looking at this one, it's color-coded to help. Green means it has to do with some sort of direction. Right? Well, it's a preverb. That's all it means. It's a preverb. In this case, it is a direction. The capital N is noun. Heen is a noun. That's why you have heened. You could have cutked. It fell on the ground. Cut with the geet. Ah, cut with the geet. They fell on the floor. Ah, cut with the geet. They fell on me. Okay? Then you have blue, capital O, object. D plus S, purple, classifier, geet, brown, verb root. So then you see at with the git, which you can change to hint with the git. We have that same verb that we just saw. That's a lot. I know that's a lot. Where is that dictionary? Uh, if you go to our class page, you'll find it, which I'll show you here. Um, page. So if you go to Learning Clinkit, Intermediate Clinkit, under Resources, it is Clinkit Dictionary Current Draft by Hune. Uh, I got to give a lot of credit to uh, Yesh Hune, Jeff Lear, for all of his work with his amazing dictionaries, Aki Shawu, Carrie Eggleston, for her amazing work with her dictionary and verb database, Zeush, James Crippen, for his uh, incredible work in trying to sort of look at how we can divide Tlingit into its components. Um, uh, Huni. Um, some friends of mine who do work in both Dena'ina and do work in uh, I can't remember if, I think it was Oneida. I was at a presentation of Oneida language, and I saw a Mohawk had done the same thing, where they color-coded all these parts. That's the general approach we're taking to think it now, is to say, look at these colors. Every one of these things is like a box, and in those boxes, those things do something. Um, and then uh, Kuch, David Strong, who challenged me, I think a year ago, maybe a year and a half ago, Hey, why don't you color code all the entries in your dictionary? So I, I figured out how to do that. Um, but that's, so if you go in and you look at them, and it does say object and transitive, but you don't have to remember that. All you have to remember is when you look it up, if you see capital O, there's an object there. You can't remove it. If you go look at a different verb, uh, so... Uh, it's just an object. Here's one. To wake someone up, right? So here you're going to have K in front of it. Can't go away, has to stay there. Uh, it does mean upward. Object, subject, S classifier, so it's going to be S or S, and GEET. So then if you look at the, the examples here, K S GEET, wake them up. And then you can look at the perfective, k ausagit, they woke them up. What you will learn is that there's an object and a subject there, so you could change those. 
Kehat wusikit. They woke me up. Kehat yisikit. You woke me up. Keikh sikit. I woke you up. Kehas chosikit. I woke them all up. So you learn, well, like, where are those things that you could change? What can they change to? So that's what we're going to start doing is like looking at that stuff. Uh, this all comes from these two little sentences. And again, like when I, when I teach intermediate Tlingit, I kind of do deep water stuff and we just goof around a little bit and then we come, we'll come back and we'll just start building our way up to all of this stuff. So if it's new to you, it's new to a lot of us and it's okay. It's okay. But as we ask these questions, and different people are going to latch on to things differently. Like if someone has studied other languages before, they might say, oh, look, objects, subjects, cool. I could change those things. Other people might get terrified of that, but they know a bunch of the language already, right? And it's, all, it's going to be okay, and you're going to be okay. Um, I don't know about this person who fell in the water. I'm hoping they're okay. They must be, because someone's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a puddle. Yeah. Crazy. I made like a little, little illustration of it to oh, record it. Yeah. Oh, you can. Yeah. <laughs> See, whenever I want to make somebody related to somebody, my little illustrations in my notebook, I give them the same hat. Oh, oh nice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thoughts or questions? In, in this, when I translate this, there's no gender in that sentence, but I will sometimes add it if it seems like it's in the illustration. But that could easily be a long-haired boy, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think we got time to do this one. Well, someone wants to read it right away. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. We gotta have someone else read it. You can only read once and then you gotta wait for someone else. But I do appreciate it. Anyone online want to read this one? Oh, wait. Are you guys seeing sure, this? I can. Okay. Isik akwe kadagah a. Dudushi kut ujihikh. Chish. Isik akwe katakah. Ah. Dudushi kut ujihikh. Anything that you recognize, reader? Uh, so I believe that says your daughter. Yep. Gah is crying. So Okay, hold on. Let the reader let the reader do it first, and then we'll open it up to. Okay. Them. So, <clears throat> so is that your daughter? Um, crying. Thank you to my thank you to my friend. <laughs> and then yes, her cat did a thing. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good. Like so. As we're doing this, like we get sometimes we just get it to the verb. That's exactly where we want to get to. And, and for some of us, like, you know, there might be some new things there. Isik akwe kadakah. Let's talk about this akwe for a second. That, at the core of this, is <coughs> ge. G, high tone short E. If you go to Teslin, it turns into ge. But when you say, when, wherever you have the ge, Whatever it follows, that's what it's asking yes or no about. So this is not, is your daughter crying? You'd say, isik kadikach ke. It would jump over to there. Right? But because it says akwe, which is, is that the thing? Right? So for example, if something was walking out on, you know, say we're walking, and I said, nuskakwe. What did I just ask? A wolverine. Is that a wolverine? Right? So it is asking like, and so in this case, is that your daughter crying? So we already know they're crying. We're not asking if they're crying. And that's how the get works. 
whatever it follows, that's so whenever you see the get part, or if you're asking about something, it goes right after you know the thing that you're asking about. And it turns it into a yes or no question. Yes, her cat ran away. I'll just give you the answer to that. So this is another emotion verb, would you hear, which means to run. And this part right before it, which we saw when we looked up another verb, we did see qut. That means to be lost. Qut wa gud. I got lost. Qut would you hear. So this means the cat is lost, but it could also mean the cat around, because the cat might not be lost. The cat might be like, forget this, I'm getting out of this house, I'm going to go live in the wild, hunt mice all day, that's my life. But it just means lost or ran away. Does that, uh, that coot, is that a, that's a verb prefix? So is it ever going to be standalone or it always has to have a verb tied to it? <laughs> that's another great question. So this is, this all comes down to this little thing. So what we're going to learn is there's nouns that we can put onto verbs. And one of the most mysterious ones is And you have used it if you've said That right in front of it is probably this same one. Where it gets interesting uh, is if we if we have "ke" right here. Let's see how I can do this. Okay, here's "ke." I know we're at time. I'll try and be fast. So you can say uh, these are suffixes: "de," "dach," "oops," "nach," and "t." And what these suffixes mean on their own is generally towards, from, through, or along, and at, arrived at, right? So if we think of this, so here's <coughs> kuk, here's day, and dach, and nach, and we actually have combinations here. Uh, we'll start with this one. Has anybody ever heard kunach? It's very. Really? No. Really? Uh. Anybody ever hear kudach? Too much. Too much. Uh. Aw. I won't say anything else. Anybody hear kut? Mm -hmm. Lost. And then this one, you it's rare to see it. But it means to oblivious. Oh, yeah. So there is something about huh. And so whenever you say put, they arrived at put, they're lost. And it's it's just an interesting thing. Some of these things in Klinget, like there's a whole logic to the language. And we start to get a peek into that logic. And sometimes our English brain would be like, doesn't make sense, I don't get it, no way. But then sometimes you just got to say, okay, let's learn this whole other way of thinking about things. Good question. But maybe we've done... <laughs> we work too much. Verb conjugation, kude. Yes. Predict the good. Predict the good. It went into a blue. <laughs> first. Predict the good. It eclipsed. On that note, going to cheese. Uh, we'll see you folks. So again, Tuesday we're not doing class. We're just observing a cultural exchange. Uh, but your things to study are to memorize as many bird names as you can. So on Thursday, when we come back into the classroom, we'll see how many birds we can name. Thursday? Thursday. Tuesday. Can we use adjectives? 
<laughs> like white raven, big raven, small oh. raven. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. 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 Yes.